Hey guys, Dan here, aka Wolf, and today we will be playing an indie game for PC that was just released on Steam, Jung's Labyrinth, created by Jan Yellowcheck. Now this game is more of an atmospheric, thought-provoking game, meant to introduce players to some of the primary concepts of renowned psychiatrist and psychoanalyst Carl Jung. So if you're into alchemical dream symbolism and navigating the inner self, that kind of thing, I will be giving away five Steam keys for Jung's Labyrinth. And to throw your name into the hat, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and drop a comment on this video declaring your interest in the game. And if you want to enter your name into the drawing a second time, you can follow me on Twitter and send me a shout out along with the hashtag Carl Jung and hashtag Jung's Labyrinth. You should also know that I provide the voice for four of the characters in the game, so if you can guess all four roles correctly without cheating and looking at the credits, your name will be thrown into the hat another time. So you can potentially enter your name into the drawing three times for your chance to win one of the five keys I'll be giving away. Now even though I recorded dialogue for the game, I've never played the game before so I am completely new to the gameplay and how the actual outline of the game is going to unfold. You can check the description for timestamps for different events that are going to happen during the gameplay. So before we go any further, I just want to warn you that it may be jarring to hear me talking as I play while also hearing me perform characters in the game. And if it's weird for you, just imagine how surreal it's going to be for me. And if you can't tell if it's me or a character in the game, just consider that part of your Labyrinth experience. Alright, without further ado, let's dive into this, shall we? Well, there is nothing to resume, so we want to start a new game. I never get tired of this view. Yeah, it's a great place to live, and I'm grateful for the visit, Hermes. Thank you for this gift. Though, if I'm being honest, I am a bit nervous and excited. I just don't know what to expect. Don't mention it. As I said, the mescaline will take effect in 40 minutes after eating the cactus. Whatever you do, don't try to fight the experience. Go with it. It will lead you right to your true self. And whatever shadows you meet, don't run from them. Embrace them. Okay, I hope this works. Don't worry, it will. Thanks, Hermes. It's only a psychedelic trip, right? What could go wrong? Remember what I said and you'll do just fine. Thanks. See ya. Embrace the shadows. Got it. Is that you, John Wayne? Is this me? All right, here we are. Looking around the house. Hidden behind. Oops. I don't think I need those. Something to eat in here. No. Can't open that. Cac eat cactus. Mescaline! Oh, and an achievement. All right. Look at the peyote. Yes, indeed. The shadow resides within you, brave traveler. Seek your inner archetypes. You must make peace with them. Seek the three behelet stones. One black, one silver, and the last, crimson. Let them guide you to the arch tree of life. You will find yourself there. Enter the labyrinth. The rest is up to you. Awesome. I really dig this stuff, and I was totally unaware of her dialogue, too. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, I didn't do her voice. All right, am I inside the cactus? Gonna be going fast here. I'm very curious to see how quickly I can finish the game. I also wanna have some replay value where I come back and sort of take my time. Hey, it's my desk. I'm 
Bedrooms and bedroom. Not a color I would choose. Oh. Let's see what lies beyond the door. Your progress is automatically saved. Why, thank you, good program. Very interesting. Nice and atmospheric. Is this where David Bowie lives? Negrito, Dark Knight of the Soul. Don't let my speed fool you. I am nervous. Spoiler alert, I recorded pain sounds. So I know there are things in here that will inflict pain. Is it weird that I actually want to hear my own pain sounds? Our first door, ladies and gentlemen. Hello there. And who are you supposed to be? I'm your inner child. I see. And what is it that you're looking for? Nothing. I just want to play. You just want to play? Why? It's fun. I could do it all day. Don't get me wrong. Playing is fun. But don't you feel a little bad when you haven't been productive all day? No. Quite the opposite. I just love running around and playing. What do you mean, running around? You mean, inside the labyrinth? Yes. Sometimes I get lost, and that's no fun. I get scared, so I often stay in the garden. It sounds scary to get lost. What do you do when that happens? I call out and the caregiver comes to rescue me. I don't know what I would do if she abandoned me. Just thinking about that makes me want to cry. Well, don't cry. Is there something I can do to make you happier? Sure. Don't ever grow up. When you grow up, your heart dies and you won't be fun to play with anymore. I won something, and an achievement, Peter Pan achievement. Why, hello there. Hello there, who are you? I am the caregiver. And what is it that you desire? To take care of others, it fulfills me. Why? I don't want to be selfish, and I enjoy helping others. Even though they may not want it? All the better. I can guilt trip them and control them that way. Well, why would you want to do that? So they can never leave me. What do you mean? If I do everything for them, then they will be forever dependent on me. Like the child over there, it will never grow up and will have to stay here with me. I thought that you were compassionate because you were helping others, but this just sounds very selfish and evil. What are you talking about? I am as compassionate as I can be. I give him nothing but love. Everything he needs, I provide. But he'll never be able to grow up or become independent because he'll always be dependent on you. I know, I know, but I just love him so much. I can't let him ever leave me. But you must, otherwise his anima will stay locked in here with you and he will never find a proper woman for himself. I didn't realize that I was slowing his growth that much. I, I thought if I took care of him all the time, he'd never leave, but I guess it's exactly what will make him hate me if I'll keep overdoing it. I see your point, brave traveler. I don't know what Behelet Stone means, but I will take it.
Later, little dude. You know, since we're in the labyrinth, let's make things a little bit fun. When I go back through to edit this, I'm going to hide some David Bowies inside the labyrinth. If you can find them all and count their total, DM that to me on Twitter, and I will enter your name into the drawing two additional times. So that means, let's see, all told, you could enter yourself into the drawing five times. But make sure you don't post your guess in the comments. Make sure you send that to me in a DM on Twitter or Reddit. Either form is acceptable. You have 13 hours in which to solve the labyrinth before your baby brother becomes one of us forever. Such a pity. Jung's student, Eric Neumann, used the analogy of physical organs to help illuminate the concept of the archetypes. Just as a body is structured by organs, which are largely formed prior to birth, so the mind possesses psychic organs which structure it, the archetypes. Just as the physical organs operate without one's conscious awareness, so do the archetypes. Jung divided the psyche into three major realms, consciousness, the personal unconscious, Whoa. and the collective unconscious. Just gonna let this play out These before I go forward. These realms are not closed off from one another, but constantly interact in a compensatory manner. The conscious realm is one's field of awareness, consisting of those psychic contents that one has knowledge of. The conscious realm, while extremely important in its own right, is, according to Jung, dwarfed in scope by the unconscious realm. The unconscious consists of those psychic contents which one is unaware of, and Jung divided this into two main parts, the personal unconscious on one hand, and the collective unconscious on the other hand. Hello there. Who are you? I am the orphan, alone in the world. And what do you want most out of life? To belong. To fit in. Why is that important to you? Isn't that obvious? I don't want to be left out. I wouldn't know what to do. I need other people. I am alone in the world. But you're not alone. There are people that care about you. Do I? Yeah, sure. Who would want to be friends with me? I don't know anything. People forgot about me. They use me and throw me away. I am nothing. No, you aren't. Look, you are inside the labyrinth. That means you're on the hero's journey. That's important. Focus on that. Stop! You don't know anything about me. Of course I do. You're part of me, after all. And if we want to get through this thing together, we're going to have to work together. But I don't know if I can do it. Look how deep the labyrinth is. Wouldn't it be better if we just didn't try this? I would rather stay where I am. We can't be afraid to take a step towards that that makes us uncomfortable. Come on, I'll show you how to do it. All right then, I will try. No one ever supports me like this, so this is quite a surprise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Orphan. What a sweet guy. Don't mind my chair. Man, can y'all hear that thunder out there? I guess I will find out on the playback. So it looks like, let's see, we've had two encounters. You can hear in the top of the screen. Oh no, three, that's right. We have three fragments in the top left of the screen. It looks like we have one more to find before that makes a solid circle. It's kind of hard to look out. What happens when that becomes a full circle? <clears throat>
Really digging this music. Ooh, what do we have here? All right, who are you? I am the warrior. The warrior, huh? Well, what do you want? To win. Why is it so important to win? All I want is simple, to have my own way. And why is having your own way so important to you? Because my way is the best, and others are weak. Why do you assume that everyone is weaker than you? Look at them. That's all you need to do. But I don't think that everyone is weak. Oh, they are. They have no discipline, no willpower. They listen to their every impulse, these weaklings. Why is it bad to listen to my impulses? Because it gets you nowhere. You will stay a nobody for the rest of your pathetic life. No status, no power. No threat to anybody, just a weak coward. Wait, do you think that I'm a coward? Yes. Okay, that's a bit harsh, but tell me what I can do to bring more of your energy into my life. Stop being pathetic. You have to figure that out for yourself. But I really don't know, and I do want to change. So what should I do? That. Do. Just start doing instead of your pathetic thinking. Now leave me be, I have more important things to do. Is that a fact? Because you kind of look like Sisyphus to me, chopping your regenerating bamboo stick. Well, love. <laughs> Alright, so we have all four pieces of this behelot stone, so what is next? What do we need to find next? Ooh, another cassette tape. Won't let me grab it. Part of spiritual development is to recognize the satanic tendencies that characterize you, and to fully wrestle with them, and to integrate them. This is the thing. It's not so much to cast them away, it's to transmute them. And you can see the difference between people who have done that and people who haven't, at least to some degree. Because people who haven't integrated their shadow are naive. Ooh, hello. Someone who has we'll be right integrated back. the shadow, they're, they're dangerous in the martial arts sort of way. They are dangerous, but they don't have to be. Their presence radiates the potential for havoc. That's pretty cool. I'm digging these cassette tapes, man. You're gonna see me, uh... uh... oh, we're back where we came from. You're gonna see me push against walls like this. I just, I'm convinced there has to be some kind of secret walls in here. Wouldn't be a labyrinth without secret walls, right? Got that tape. Well, looky there, running around in circles. Beautiful. I do like uh, the way this look and sound uh, so far. Secret. Yes, yes. Oh. All right. Let me, okay, can't go there. I think this might be the way out. Look into the mirror. I don't want to.
Speedo. And that looks like stuff that can inflict pain. All right, so this is the sadistic side. I want to see what it sounds like to inflict pain. But first, a quick bathroom break. All right, time to hurt myself. All right, I gotta jump over these things. A running start. Pain sounds a bit quieter than I thought they would be. Wonder what other devices we will find to inflict the pain. Interesting. Uh-oh. That sounds very... Such interesting sounds. F <laughs> Holy shit, that's cool. <laughs> Come here, little guy. Uh oh. I am going to lead you back to these traps, boy. Come follow me. Yeah, just like that. Yes. You want some of the tasty wolf? You come get some of the tasty wolf. Oh. That is so satisfying. Get wrecked, spider. Let's see, we'll get to our first door here. In this new section, really loving the new. Oh, hello, goodbye. Come on, little dude. You know what? I'm gonna try and jump over this little guy. Yeah, yeah. Follow your bliss, and that will take you ever higher to the enlightenment. This is not the Jungian idea at all. On the contrary, the Jungian idea is that what you most need will be found where you least want to look. That's right. <laughs> Little dudes are everywhere. I can't believe I haven't found my first door. I haven't found nothing but spiders and traps on uh, this year cassette tape. Sometimes thought 
and I'm going off my head. Bingo. The unconscious became alive. It was my partner. That's why you have to be lonely. So the unconscious becomes stronger. It's like loading up the unconscious. And then madness. And then you are not lonely anymore. So we have to support the unconscious. In we go, ladies and gentlemen. In we go. Are you the one they call the rebel? The rebel? <laughs> what a name. And what are you after? And why, oh why, should I tell you? Because I cannot continue without knowing you. You were imperfect. Most of you is completely useless. And I want to get rid of that. Well, you haven't been doing a very good job then. I want to change, but not by destroying myself with drugs. But alcohol, drugs, and saying fuck you to your boss are pretty life-changing. You may be right, but that's not going to do us any good if we can't make money and live the way we want. <laughs> look at me. Do I look like I give a shit? You ignore me most of the time, so why should I help you? You deserve what you got. It's true. I have been ignoring you, and for a long time. So just tell me what to do to fix it. What would you like me to do? Oh, I don't know. Something simple. You know, real easy like. Like, I don't know, quit your job? I can't do that. I'm not quitting my job. Ooh, well, unfortunately, there's nothing to talk about, Dan. Please. Close the door on your way out. Please. I will do anything except quitting the job. All right, all right. I'm on a vacation. At least two weeks. Somewhere nice. And also, I want a new girl. This one is becoming boring, if you know what I mean. All right. You've got yourself a deal. But if I do this, you have got to stop making me come to work drunk. Whoa, 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 hold on there, buddy. No one said anything about that. <sighs> All right, deal. The white stone fragment is ours. All right. One down, looks like three more to go, just like before. I'm low on health. I really hope there is a way to heal myself from all zap damage. But there's a special achievement for not dying. And that's very careful. Oh. Making me nervous. I want my achievement. It's weird that it shows the black portion in the top left hand corner. I figure since we're collecting the white stone pieces, it would show like a white piece. So, especially because it's hard to see against the background. But, no matter. Nope, nothing there. Oh, wasn't expecting that. F Just a little closer, my friend. Just a little. Yes.
Jesus. I've got like no health left at all. Nothing there. Where's my second door? Where's my second? Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Secret wall! Secret wall! You see it! You see Oh, the fire ain't even getting me. Is that a glitch or is that a real secret? I'm gonna take it as a real secret wall. Just like Sarah found. Look at all these guys. Sarah in the labyrinth. Jareth, the Goblin King, aka David Bowie. Alright. There's one secret door. Secret wall, I guess, technically speaking. Technically, it is a secret wall. A magic wall, if you will. No secret wall there. Aha. Seeker, what are you seeking? I'm seeking a better future for myself. I can't stand a life where I would have to work in a meaningless job. I'm looking for my true self, really. But your job is not meaningless, is it? Of course it is. Or should I say was? I made us quit the horrible job. We will find a better one anyway. Our inner creator is thanking me. Wait until you meet him. He's quite a guy. He was dying every day in the job. Our soul was dying. I saved us. You may be right about that, but what are we going to do now? That's easy. Work on our independence. We don't need people in our lives. Only a few close ones that are important. We are content with being alone, remember? That may be true, but we can't stay alone our whole life. Never settling down, never committing to anything fully. I mean, we could find a girl. Another girl? How am I supposed to lead us to wholeness if there's gonna be a beautiful girl around? We wouldn't be able to get out of the bed. Anima would possess us immediately, like she always does. No, thanks. I will rather travel alone. That's a fair point, Seeker. I'll leave you to it then. Come to think of it, I don't want to settle down either. Ah, uh, my mic was muted. Good thing I realized that now and not after I uh, get an hour further into the game. But cool stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, two down. I'm almost dead. Let's find ourselves a couple of more doors and see what else lies waiting for us inside the labyrinth. Oh. 
Something so small can be so startling, frightening, and cute all in the same. Come to me, my little shadow. My little creepling. That I might jump over thee and seek passage. What if that little spider, like, just wants to be hugged? It's like, Daddy, give me a hug. I'm your shadow. Give me... No, he led me to a trap. I like that one. Oh, 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 oh! In the sea without wind, and an achievement, boys. Eating his wings very well, he maketh himself yet full stable. When all his feathers be from him gone, he standeth still here as a stone. Here is now both white and red, and also a stone to quicken the dead. And all some without fable, both hard and soft. Understand now, well and right. Thank you, God, for this sight. I shall you tell with plain declaration where, how, and what is my generation. Homogeny is my father, and Magnesia is my mother, and Azot truly is my sister. Kibrick, or Suf, is my brother. The Serpent of Arabia is my name. That which is leader of all this game. That sometime was both wood and wild. And now I am both ah. mild. I'm almost dead. The sun and the moon with their might have chastised me that was so light. My wings that me brought hither and thither where I thought. Now with their might they down me pull and bring me where they will. The blood of my heart I wish now causeth both joy and bliss and dissolve it the very stone, and knitteth him here he have done. Now make it hard that was licks, and causeth him to be fix. Of my blood and water I wish plenty in all the world there is. It runneth in every place, who findeth he hath grace. In the world, it runneth over all, and goeth round as a ball. Shit. But thou understand well this, of the work thou shalt miss. Therefore know Ere thou begin, what he is and all. Not today, Spider, not today. Many a name he hath for sure. And all is but one nature. Thou must part him in three, and then knit him as the Trinity. And make them all but one. Lo, here is the philosopher's. Stone. Holy cow. Secret door. 
that synchronicity in action there. I uh, found this tape with the secret door and it played a long recording and ends with me finding another secret wall. Secret walls, rather not secret door, but you know what I mean. <laughs> that actually scared <laughs> scared me. Oh, all right, we still got two doors to find. Release my health bars full. Bad news is. According to the trailer, when you die... Ah! Son of a... Anyway, when you die, the... Labyrinth is procedurally generated, so... I th Good luck for all the mental mapping that we just did. And all those damn spiders will probably respawn. My cute... Speaking of... It's a me, Wolfio. Yeah, yeah. Y'all like that room over there, don't you? Now that the oh. Hot potato. No secret walls there. Hello, little little guy. Come on, come to the fire. You know you want it. It's good for you. There you go. Hug the fire, not the wolf. Playing this in VR, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe one in there. Oh, my, my biscuits are burning! There's somebody Sam here. Son of a keep this up, I'm going to be back down to my previous health bar in no time. And a bunch of dead ends this time. Son of a god. Ooh, cool as hell to get... Oh, can't go beside the fire, but can go beside the spikes. Well, it's probably just because they're down. If they're up, you probably can't go beside them, and I don't want to test that feature out. I just want to find my next Doa. Now that would have been freaky in VR because it was freaky enough not in. Oh, shh! God damn, these things are everywhere. Yeah, yeah. We. All right. Cool. Facing your fears. Is this the secret wall like from last time? No. Yeah, it's 
the same one. In the sea without leaves, standing the bird of Hermes. Alright. Eating his wings very well, and maketh himself yet full stable. When all his feathers be from him gone, he standeth still here as a stone. Here is now both white and that one. Red, and also a stone ah. to quicken the dead. Oh. Oh. Some no hugs for you, little spider. Both hard and soft and malleable. Maybe that's the whole point. I'm supposed to integrate Understand my shadow. Well and right. Embrace him. And thank you, God. Of this Embrace sight. my inner spiderling. I shall you tell with plain declaration where, how, and what is my generation. Oh. I feel like I've been honor. here before. And Magnesia is my mother. And Azot truly is my sister. And Kibrik forsooth is my brother. The Serpent of Arabia is my name. Don't defy me. That which is leader of all this game. Oh. That sometimes there's so many of them. Wood and wild. And now. See, this I'm part is familiar to me. So, okay, procedurally generated, but oh, see, that's the bastard blade that killed me. With their might. And no that secret wall for payout. So, I recognize this shape, so maybe there are procedurally generated, but maybe they're in modules, so this module of the map might be located over here, so on. Yep, because there's that secret wall again. Or maybe... Yeah, the secret chamber. The secret tape chamber. Dissolve it, the very stone. And knitteth him ere he have done. Now make it hard that was lix, and causeth him to be fix of my blood and water. I wish plenty in all the world there is. Oh, the dead ends, the dead ends. It runneth in every place. Who findeth he hath grace? Oh. In the world, it runneth over all, and goeth round as a ball. But thou understand well this of the work thou shalt miss. Therefore, know ere thou begin. What he is and all his kin. There's the secret wall again. Right by the fire. Yeah, maybe this hasn't changed. Maybe. Thou must part him in three. And then. Maybe I'm just confusing myself as being inside a labyrinth is prone to do. Getting you all disoriented. Stuff like that. Is the philosopher's stone. Just gotta find two doors, and they are so elusive. Hello, little guy. Goodbye, little guy. You guys gotta bear with me, I know. I'm probably, uh...
double checking some of these walls a little bit too much. <clears throat> so I can't find these other two doors, so I'm like, is there a secret wall that I am missing here? Since we do know there are secrets. You can come over here to the fire. You can come to the fire. Yeah! Take out my frustration for not finding doors on you, little spider. Man, how are they getting on the side of the walls? That's pretty cool, but maybe they just stay up there. So, clearly we gotta come back to that huge sewer cap once we have the other pieces of this... This, excuse me, albedo stone. Oh, shit. Those things are scary. If you're gonna, like, not look in the right way, you just... Nothing there. So. And you can come over to. No secrets there. Ah. The sweet sound of a spider getting taken into the blades. Here we go. It is not in me. Me, I am justified in annihilating this enemy, whether it be with atom bombs or gas chambers. Who are you? Oh, who is it now? Stop distracting me. I'm sorry. I just want to know what you're doing here. What are you doing here? I said, don't distract me. I am working. I have work to do. Damn people coming in here. Be gone with you. You'll spoil my focus. All right, but could you talk to me for at least a minute? Jesus, okay, what do you want? And make it quick. Why don't you tell me a bit about what you're working on? Many projects. Can't describe them all. But... I am trying to catalyze my identity through my art. I have a constant stream of ideas through my head and not enough time to manifest them all. But I can't help myself. I have to channel my art. That sounds great. How long do you think this project will take you? Ah, that's hard to tell. But I bet a more interesting idea will come in a month and I will have to drop everything and leave this unfinished. But isn't that just gonna make a bigger mess for you here? What mess? You call this mess? Do you have OCD or something? You overly orderly people. Ha! I don't care about any mess. I have work to do. Have you met the king? Order in his domain. But whatever you do, don't let him in here. Old bastard wants to eradicate my creativity. He says it brings too much chaos into his kingdom. He hates me. He wants to destroy my art. That would kill me. Okay, okay, calm down. I haven't seen him anywhere yet. Oh, thank young for that. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get into it again. You have seriously interrupted my flow. Apparently I had myself muted again, but uh, not like I said much during that section. All right, we have one final piece to find. Hopefully it doesn't take me as long. It's there. All right.
Yes, I really did just go back and check the very door I just came out of because I am winning when it comes to this labyrinth thing. Hi. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, little spider. Don't be shy. Just come over here. They've all respawned. Is it possible that I have found all the secret walls there are? I highly doubt it. Secret there. Feed the flames, my boy. Feed the flames. Don't be shy. Come over to fire. There you go. All right. The quest for our final fragment of the Albedo Stone continues. Oh, didn't even hardly see that guy. Come, little one. It's time for you to get very warm. Over here. Yes. Become one with the flame. So many dead ends. Ah. Ow. Young don't like that new age, does he? The new age is predicated on the idea that you can do nothing but follow your bliss, and that will take you ever higher in the enlightenment. 
This is not the Jungian idea at all. On the contrary, the Jungian idea is that what you most need to be found where you least want to look. I do have to say I am digging all these uh, cassette tapes and what they're talking about. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff if you've never... Uh... Ow. jump this much in real life I'd be in really good shape right now. It takes a lot of energy to jump. A lot of energy. That really efficient VR can't come fast enough, right? Potentially the most in shape people will be those who play video games. I'm determined not to die again, even though I keep letting these spiders nibble on me. I'm trying to concentrate. I need to go to the bathroom, but I don't want to take a break. I am determined to find the last door. The last fragment of this piece before break. Okay, that's the beginning of the labyrinth with the two propellers over there. So, I don't think I searched very well around here, so I'm determined it must be close. I can sense it. it must be around here. Well, tape I don't think I found before. very strongly was the idea of the projection of the psychic contents. Projection of the active imagination onto processes and objects in the exterior world. In the case of the alchemist, it was the swirling chemical processes in their Olympics, in their alchemical vessels. Just, they projected yeah. the great round of the archetypes onto these chemical processes. They saw crystallization, sublimation, separation, as statements about the contents of the psyche as much statements about the exterior world, because for them, the firm division between mind and matter that is built into Western thinking now did not exist then. Oh, two spiders. How the hell they creep up on me like this? Now there are two of them. This looks promising. Two torchlit paths. 
Oh, disappointed. Only if it was just around the corner from when I exited, if I didn't go down this way, but I think I did. But did I go down all of the paths in this module? Skirting the flame, ladies and gentlemen, skirting the flame. Okay. One door stands between us and completing the white albedo stone. Albedo, the great alchemical lightning. Really digging the deeper themes of this and excited to see where this goes. Whoa. Whoa. Oh! They trapped me. see these plates here on the wall I get this envision I get this uh, vision of the like a blade piercing the eye yes who are you I am the lover who else all right lover what do you want from life <laughs> I want nothing but to follow my bliss. What are you searching for right now? What I am looking for is the one and only true love. I have tried so many partners so far, but it never led anywhere. It never felt real and genuinely fulfilling. And I sense that, you know. And what do you fear? Well, the most I fear, I guess, is being alone. Never finding love is my biggest nightmare. Really? Would it be that bad, being alone? Yes. I would feel like dying. There is no use for a life like death. Life without love is no better than being dead. I see. Well, tell me what I can do to have you more in my life. Just notice the bliss around you. Go watch the sunset and feel the colors. Sometimes it's just too much for me and I can't handle it all by myself. In times like this, I have to tell the creator to draw it for me. Otherwise my heart would explode. So. Feel the atmosphere around you, brave traveler. Whenever you feel like dancing, dance. Dance like no one is watching, really. Don't hold yourself back when you feel like expressing yourself. And don't be afraid to let yourself devour in a moment. Because sometimes, it's all you need. That's not always easy for me. Sometimes I'm just in my head too much. You better watch out then. Notice your feelings more and learn to control them. Otherwise Anima will possess you. What do you mean by Anima? She is waiting for you. You can't reach your true self without going through her. So be aware. I mean very aware, brave traveler. She wants you all for herself. You say I can't reach my true self without going through this anima. What will she do to me when I meet her? She'll grip you and never let go. And it will happen in a blink of an eye. You won't even notice and you're there. Unable to control yourself. Exhausting yourself just for her and her needs. You will make anything for her. 
and she will convince you that you're doing the right thing. Which is absolutely the worst part because you, you will be getting nothing from it. Nothing. So how do I make peace with Anima then? As I said, control your feelings and learn to understand them. It happens to me many times that I just surrender to them and lose myself in a whirl of impulsive pleasure. And there is no love there, brave traveler. There is just filling your inner void with something that will be gone before you even enjoy it. Trust me. I would exchange a hundred of my one night stands for just the one that would stay forever. But you will not find that easily. And you cannot force anyone to love you. Anyway, be prepared for Anima. Just don't fall for tricks. You will need your shadow for that, but first, you must tame it. Yes! Finally, the final fragment. How valuable this is. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So now just to navigate back to the manhole cover, I believe. In that center chamber where all the, uh, all the Spidarians are uh, congregating around. I just want to reach the end of this, the end of this section so I can, Ugh. so I can take my bathroom break. There we go, there we go. Rubido, the Great Reddening. Alright, I'm going to take a very, very quick break. And we're back. Alright. This is pretty cool. We, uh, we're a spider now. We are integrating our shadow. That's... Oh. <laughs> Alright. This is, uh... Digging this. All right, this is a pretty cool uh, change of pace here. Hearing whisperings, I 
I'm afraid I know what that is from the trailer and the process, Miss Anima. I don't want to know what happens if you get close to her. Oh no. She's close, I hear her! This is pretty badass. Just the way it feels. You don't need to try. It's interesting because I feel like I have more vision. I can. I like how I can uh, kind of. My uh, field of view is expanded now that I'm a spider, which is really cool. Kind of like, you know, the eight eyes and stuff. To just see so much more around me. Not to mention being able to navigate up the walls and on the ceiling and stuff. A pretty cool metaphor for uh, having greater awareness and uh, having more ways to navigate the labyrinth once we've learned the secret of integrating our shadow. But even as you gain the ability to navigate in advanced ways, ooh, look. A treasure. Give me the treasure. Both anima and animus archetypes, as practical experience shows, possess a fatality that can, on occasion, produce tragic results. They are quite literally another the treasure and mother of all the disastrous entanglements of fate, and have long been recognized as such by the whole world. I'm gonna wait Together, for this one to finish. A divine pair. One of whom, in accordance with his logos nature, Whoa, what was that? is characterized by Numa Nus, rather like Hermes with his ever-shifting hues, while the other, in accordance with her Eros nature, wears the features of Aphrodite, Helen, Persephone, and Hecate. Both of them are unconscious powers, gods, in fact, as the ancient world quite rightly conceived them to be. To call them by this name is to give them that central position in the scale of psychological values, which has always been theirs, whether consciously acknowledged or not. For their power grows in proportion to the degree that they remain unconscious. Those who do not see them are in their hands, just as typhus epidemic flourishes best when its source is undiscovered. Even in Christianity, the divine syzygy has not become obsolete, but occupies the highest place as Christ and his bride, the church. The archetypes most clearly characterized from the empirical point of view are those which have the most frequent and the most disturbing influence on the ego. These are the shadow, the anima, and the animus. The most accessible of these, and the easiest to experience, is the shadow, for its nature can in large measure be inferred from the contents of the personal unconscious. To become conscious of it involves recognizing the dark aspects of the personality as present and real. This act is the essential condition for any kind of self-knowledge, and it therefore, as a rule, meets with considerable resistance. You can't escape. Indeed, self-knowledge as a psychotherapeutic measure frequently requires much painstaking work. Damn, I ain't finding no tourists, but I sure am finding a lot of cassette tapes. but by putting it clearly before him as that which he is not. There are actually people who have the whole meaning of their life 
their true significance in the unconscious, while the conscious mind is nothing but inveiglement and error. Son of a... Well, there's the door. separate himself from the unconscious, not by repressing it, for then it simply attacks him from the rear, but by putting it clearly before him as that which he is not. There are actually people who have the whole meaning of their life, their true significance in the unconscious, while the conscious mind is nothing but inveiglement and error. integration of the shadow, or the realization of the personal unconscious, marks the first stage in the analytic process, and that without it, a recognition of anima and animus is impossible. The shadow can be realized only through a relation to a partner, and anima and animus only through a relation to a partner of the opposite sex, because only in such a relation do the projections become operative? The recognition of the anima gives rise in a man to a triad, one third of which is you transcendent are masculine subject. That actually scared me. <laughs> and the transcendent. I know we could hear her, but it was still like she came out of nowhere. The missing fourth element kind of weird. That would make this and triad kind of cool. Is in man. The archetype of the wise old man, and in a woman is the chthonic mother. These four constitute a half imminent and half transcendent quaternity, an archetype which I have called the marriage quaternium.
There we go. Our first door. Looks so cute with the little spider having his two hands on the door. <laughs> Your Highness, can I approach thee? I should hope so, Traveler. Come then. What is it you seek here? I wanted to talk to you, Your Highness. Find out about who you are. You're very interesting to me because I just feel like you've been missing from my life. Oh, brave Traveler. You haven't been keeping your life in order at all. And you come here asking me what it is you did wrong? Everything so far. You haven't had any control over your life. I know. What can I do to take the control back? Back? Traveler, you always had control. Assume responsibility. Stop blaming others. Your life is purely your responsibility. When you are defeated, it is because you are not strong enough. When you are betrayed, it is because you have misjudged a traitor. You are not your ambitions. You are not your good intentions. You are your actions. Everything that you do matters. One man may never lift mountains alone, but what pitiful a man he would be to blame the mountain and not himself. Accept the control that is available to you, and when you fail, learn. And who knows? Maybe enough men with enough control over themselves? A mountain itself might shiver at the thought. I know an evil man would. All right. So how do I implement these ideas? I see. And you were hoping for some grand wisdom, then? A revelation only a faraway king could give you? There is no great secret to control, Traveler. To have control is to accept control. Accept responsibility for yourself and your surroundings. Every space you inhabit, make it clean, beautiful, and good. It is small, but the world is made up of small things. Start there, and you will find the most challenging parts of your life become all the more manageable. So you're saying I should establish order wherever I go? Then what else did you plan on doing, exactly? Yes, establish order. But be wise. You must accept control, not demand it, or you would become like my brother, the tyrant. No man should want to become a tyrant. Obsessed with control for its own sake, and not for what control brings. Wicked. Murderous. And utterly unable to take a joke. That is also not good. I see what you're saying. So, how do I avoid becoming just like him? Control is good when it gives order. Tyranny is evil because it betrays true order so that tyrants may quell their fears with the illusion of greater order than they truly have. Tyrants live in fear. They fear that they will lose control, and they behave as if it is constantly slipping from their grasp. And it is. If you wish to defeat the fear of losing control, establish things you can rely on so that order is always within your power. Understand yourself. Track your habits. Keep a journal, perhaps. The more order in life you have, the more confidence you will have and the less fear will possess you and stray you toward the false order of tyranny. Thank you, Your Highness. You've been very helpful. Carry on, brave traveler. I wish you luck on your journey.
person who escapes the grim law of an antinomian is the man who knows how to separate himself from the unconscious. Not by repressing it, so then it simply attacks him in the career, but by putting it clearly before him as that which he is not. There are actually people who have the whole meaning of their life, their true significance in the unconscious. Wow. Conscious mind is nothing but inveiglement and error. A curious number of dead ends. I think I need to go towards her voice, but somehow find a way to get past her without being hurt. be a theme that the more we travel away from her, the more we find dead ends, and the more we approach addressing our anima to find what we're seeking. She's hitting me through the walls. I have no life left.
stay here with me. You can't escape. Ah yes, the beautiful reward of a door. You must be the old magician. How are you? Oh, I am well, brave traveler. But what are you doing here? People tell me that you understand the secrets of the black art. I am interested in that. Will you show me? What should I tell you about? There is simply nothing to tell. Don't be ill-natured, old man. I want to learn. What could I teach you? You are almost at the end of your journey. I want to know how to transform my own reality, just like you do. You do that with the very words you speak. Your words are either creative or destructive. If you speak truth and so harmony, your reality will always shift in ways that are creative and good, even if that means destroying that which is not in accordance with truth. If you spread lies and sow discord, then your reality will always be an inescapable destructive cycle that you create. But I am not lying in my life that much, am I? Oh, but you are. You are lying to yourself every day, and undermining your progress that way. You think of yourself too highly, and that will always have an opposite reaction in the realms of your unconscious mind. And how can I stop that? Come to terms with reality first. You can't begin to change if you don't understand and accept your situation. You can only change reality by changing yourself. There is no other way. You are the reality. You are the aperture through which the universe is observing and exploring itself. Change yourself and you change the world. But you must base your life on truth. How do I do that exactly? Solitude, my boy. Be alone for a long time. So your unconscious mind starts to speak, and then, do what it says. I think I understand, and it's actually pretty simple. Yes, indeed. That's the magic of it. It's simple to understand, but rather difficult to implement. Starting to notice that it's not returning us to outside of the door that we came into. It seems to be returning us to a starting point for, I guess, a procedural regeneration of the labyrinth. So it's not like the others where you have to find the different doors. It appears to be. You have to navigate the labyrinth and anima to get to one door four times. And, oh. Okay. That was weird. Yeah, see, it's a new regeneration or procedural regeneration the same that's going to happen when we exit the door so the good news is <clears throat> I don't have to worry about finding doors that I've already entered
really cool running on the ceilings like this. a fatality that can on occasion produce tragic results. Yay! They are quite Door number three. Father and mother of all the disastrous entanglements of fate and have long as such by the whole world. Together they form a divine pair, one of whom, in accordance with his logos nature, is characterized by Numa and Nus, rather like Hermes with his ever shifting hues while the other, in accordance with her Eros nature, wears the features of Aphrodite, Helen, Persephone, and Hecate. Both of them are unconscious powers, gods, in fact, as the ancient world quite rightly conceived them to be. To call them by this name is to give them that central position in the scale of psychological values, which has always been theirs, whether consciously acknowledged or not for their power grows in proportion to the degree that they remain unconscious. Those who do not see them are in their hands, just as typhus epidemic flourishes best when its source is undiscovered. Even in Christianity, the divine syzygy has not become obsolete, but occupies the highest place as Christ and his bride, the church. Who are you? Does it matter? My name is not important. Well, how can I use what you tell me if I don't know who you are? <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't it? You won't have a chance to apply your prejudice onto me. Oh, I understand. But what do you want then? Me? Absolutely nothing, or everything. It doesn't matter, anyway. I just want to feel alive. Do you feel alive? Because this part of the labyrinth doesn't feel that way at all. Oh, believe me, I am thrilled. Thrilled that you got this far, despite all my traps. It was funny to watch you struggle. So that was you? <laughs> Go on. Let me see what you will do next. I hope you fail. Yes, that would be fun. What can I do to honor you more in my life? You know, so you stop playing tricks on me? Just live in the moment. I hate all that planning you do. Just jump into it. Be spontaneous, trust in the process, and improvise. And let me drink some alcohol, damn it, or I will make you do it. <laughs> All right. The Hellet Stone. Whoa, just a monitor. Screen lying on the ground. Red room, anything special in here? Okay. Can't remember where I can't remember which ways <laughs> which way I came in. Oh, hold on. That is a cool looking chair. That's like Morpheus's chair from the Matrix.
right. One more piece of the stone. Find. One more piece. This is a pretty cool kind of archetypical setup of concept. Anima is the threshold guardian. So by incorporating our shadow self, the spider, leverage it against Anima. Pretty cool stuff. shadows. The shadow of my shadow on the wall. The shadow of my shadow. Is my shadow? Ah, the final the door. Of it involves recognizing the dark aspect of the personality as present and real.
And with that, our playthrough of Young's Labyrinth is complete, which I finished in a little over two hours, according to Steam. Can you complete it faster than me? Probably so. And if you can, I want to know, so tell me in the comments. What did you think about the game's approach to introducing people to Jungian psychology? I'll let you know my thoughts on that in a later video. And I also want to know if you enjoyed this. I've never recorded myself playing a game before, not with an open mic, not with the intentions of showing a raw playthrough. Would you occasionally like seen content like this in addition to my typical essays and whatnot. I want to know that too, so don't be afraid to make yourself heard. I'll probably do our contest drawing in a week or so, and all told, you have a chance to enter yourself into this drawing five times to win one of the five keys courtesy of Jan Jelicek himself. So, from all the methods listed at the beginning of this video to my hidden David Bowie game, you can enter to win five times. Well, that's all I have for now, you guys. Until next time, I'll catch you in the wilderness.